The text for this sermon is from Psalm 62, verse 5. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Welcome to Spurgeon's Sermons. If you find this sermon uplifting, be sure to subscribe to this channel every month. By God's grace, this YouTube channel shares the good news of Jesus Christ with tens of thousands of people all over the world. Your generous support today will enable us to continue producing daily content from the man known as the Prince of Preachers. Nearly 150 years after Charles Spurgeon preached these sermons, we are seeing God change lives through his preaching on this YouTube channel. So please, give your best gift today at princeofpreachers.com to help more people discover the transforming power of the gospel. Calvin translates this verse, My soul, be thou silent before God. Rest calm and undisturbed. Thine enemies are round about thee, and have sore beset thee, thy troubles do surround thee like strong bulls of Bashan, but rest, my soul, in God. Thine enemies are mighty, but he is almighty, thy troubles are grievous, but he is greater than thy troubles, and he shall deliver thee from them. Let not thy soul be agitated. The wicked are like the troubled sea that cannot rest, be not thou like unto them. Be thou calm, let not a wave ruffle thine untroubled spirit. Cast thy burden on the Lord, and then sleep on his bosom. Commit thy way unto Jehovah, and then rest in sure and certain confidence, for he everywhere hath sway, and all things serve his might, his every act pure blessing is, his path unsullied light. Oh! That we had grace to carry out the text in that sense of it. It is a hard matter to be calm in the day of trouble, but it is a high exercise of divine grace when we can stand unmoved in the day of adversity, and feel that, should the earth's old pillars shake, and all the wheels of nature break, our steadfast souls would fear no more than solid rocks when billows roar. That is to be a Christian indeed. Nothing is so sweet as to lie passive in God's hand, and no no will but his. I shall, however, this morning stand to the authorized version. My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. Here is, first, an exhortation, and secondly, an expectation. We begin with the exhortation. The psalmist was a preacher, and it was quite right that he should sometimes make himself his congregation. The preacher who neglects to preach to himself has forgotten a very important part of his audience. He who never in his silent privacy speaketh a word to his own soul, doth not know where to begin his preaching. We must first address our own soul. If we can move that by the words we may utter, we may hope to have some power with the souls of others. And note where David begins his exhortation, My soul, wait thou upon God. He addresses the very centre of his being. My soul, I preach to thee, for if thou goest wrong, all is amiss. If thou art amiss, mine eyes follow after vanity, my lips utter leasing, my feet become swift to shed blood, and mine hands meddle with mischief. My soul, I will preach to thee. My face, I will not preach to thee. Some men preach to their faces, and try to put on their countenances emotions which they never feel. No, countenance, I will leave thee alone, thou wilt be right enough if the soul is so. I will preach to thee, O my soul, and address my sermon to thee. Thou art mine only auditor, hear what I say. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Let us, then, explain the exhortation. 1. First, the psalmist means by this, My soul make God thine only object in life. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Make him the summit of thy desires and the object of thine exertions. Oh! How many men have made a fearful shipwreck of their entire existence, by choosing an object inferior to this high and noble object of existence, the serving of God. I could put my finger upon a thousand biographies of men, who after having lived in this world and done great things, have nevertheless died unhappily, because they did not first seek God and his righteousness. Perhaps there never was a mind more gigantic than the mind of Sir Walter Scott, a man whose soul was as fertile as the newly broken soil of the land of gold. That man was a good man I believe, a Christian, but he made a mistake in the object of his life. His object was to be a laird, to found a family, to plant the root of an ancestral tree the fruit of which should be heard of in ages to come, magnificent in his hospitality, generous in his nature, laborious in his continual strife to win the object of his life, yet after all he died a disappointed and unsuccessful man. He reared his palace, he accumulated his wealth, and one sad day saw it scattered to the wind, and he had lost that for which he had lived. Had he fixed his eye upon some better object than the pleasing of the public, or the accumulation of wealth, or the founding of a family, he might have got the others, and he would not have lost the first. Oh! 
Had he said, Now I will serve my God, this potent pen of mine, dedicated to the Most High, shall weave into my marvellous stories things that shall enlighten, convince, and lead to Jesus, he might have died penniless, but he would have died having achieved the object of his wishes, not a disappointed man. Oh if we could make God our only object we should rest quite secure, and whatever happened it never could be said of us, he died without having had what he wished for. How many of you that are here today are making the same mistake on a smaller scale? You are living for business. You will be disappointed, then. You are living for fame. As certain as you are alive you will die disappointed, grieved, and sad at heart. You are living to maintain respectability, perhaps that is the utmost of your desire. Poor aim that. You shall be disappointed, or even if you gain it, it shall be a bubble not worth the chase. Make God your one object in life, and all these things shall be added to you, godliness with contentment is great gain. There is no loss in being a Christian, and making God the first object, but make anything else your goal, and with all your running, should you run ever so well, you shall fall short of the mark, or if you gain it, you shall fall uncrowned, unhonoured to the earth. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Say, I love to serve him, I love to spread his kingdom, to advance his interests, to tell the story of his gospel, to increase the number of his converted ones, that shall be my only object, and when that is sufficiently attained, Lord, lettest thou thy servant depart in peace. 2. But the psalmist meant other things beside this, when he said, My soul, wait thou only upon God. He meant, My soul, have no care but to please God. Perhaps the most miserable people in the world are the very careful ones. You that are so anxious about what shall happen on the morrow that you cannot enjoy the pleasures of today, you who have such a peculiar cast of mind that you suspect every star to be a comet, and imagine that there must be a volcano in every grassy mead, you that are more attracted by the spots in the sun than by the sun himself, and more amazed by one sere leaf upon the tree than by all the verdure of the woods, you that make more of your troubles than you could do of your joys, I say, I think you belong to the most miserable of men. David says to his soul, My soul, be thou careful for nothing except God, cast all thy care on him, he careth for thee, and make this thy great concern, to love and serve him, and then thou needest care for nothing else at all. Oh! There are many of you people that go picking your way all through this world, you are afraid to put one foot down before another, because you fear you will be in danger. If you had grace just to turn your eye to God, you might walk straight on in confidence, and say, though I should tread on hell itself at the next step, yet if God bade me tread there it would be heaven to me. There is nothing like the faith that can leave care with God and have no thought but how to please him. Behold the fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin, and yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Say not, what shall we eat? Or, what shall we drink? Or, wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. O, oh, happy is the man who says, I am a gentleman commoner upon the bounties of providence. Let God send me little, it will be enough, let him send me much, it will not be too much, for I will divide my wealth with those who have less. I will trust to him. He has said, Thy bread shall be given thee, and thy water shall be sure. Then let famine come, I shall not starve, let the brook dry up, he will open the bottles of heaven and give me drink. Whatever